He is able, isn't he? Would you bow with me? Father, I thank you for this time we can come and worship your name. You indeed are worthy of praise and you are worthy uh, of all of our, our commitment to you, Father, and our, our praise to you. Father, I pray that today would be a day that we acknowledge that our God is able. And not only able, but he will do what is right. Father, we thank you that you do what is right by us. And Lord, I pray that today we'd learn from your word and that we would grow, Lord, in knowledge, uh, in understanding, and it might affect our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. I just got back uh, from Kentucky. Did I tell you I'm a Kentucky hillbilly? I'm uh, proud of it, <laughs> actually. Actually, I went back uh, because of my brothers and sisters. I have, I have uh, nine brothers and sisters, or I had nine. Now I have eight, eight brothers and sisters. How many of you had trouble dealing with the one or two that you had? Can you imagine nine? Yeah. Uh, we, we, were, we were together as family. I want to talk to you today about being family. I was praying about, now what am I going to preach about? Uh, and I was around my family, and I thought, well... Since they won't let me preach to them, they did let me pray at all the meals. That was pretty cool. <laughs> they won't let me preach to them. Maybe I'll preach about them <laughs> next Sunday. And then I'm going to tell them, hey, I mentioned you on Sunday. Here's the web dry, uh, website <laughs> that you can do. Newliferifle.com. <laughs> Uh, that you can go and hear what I said about you. Uh, no, actually, I love my brothers and sisters. It was really fun to be with them for a week. We hadn't been together for uh, all, all of us uh, like that uh, for uh, probably maybe as many as 10 years. It's been a long time since we've all been uh, together. We did get that family picture, you know, of all the siblings, all the brothers and sisters. The last day, 11 o'clock at night, finally got everybody together <laughs> and finally got that picture that you like to take when you get your family together. It was a great time. It was a great time. I had one cousin that when he came in the back door, his brother and some of the other family disappeared. I mean, he came in the front door, I should say. His brother and some of the family disappeared out the back door. You know? And I saw this silver streak go up the driveway and I heard tires burning <laughs> out on the roadway as somebody took off. Uh, families don't always love each other like they should, don't they? Isn't that true? Uh, I, I, I believe, though, that families are an important part of what God has put together. If we're going to cope with life, we need our family. And we need strong families. We need families that, that hold together in spite of the... The, the storms and difficulties of life, right? Uh, and, and families are so important. So as we close out this series over the next two weeks, I, I want to talk to you about family. I want to talk to you about how important family is. Uh, and I want to share with you uh, that family this week is supported by strong marriages, that we need marriages to make families work. Uh, and then next week, I want to talk to you about how important it is that we have children and that what the children are to families and how we should treat children, how God feels about children. So over the next two weeks, we're going to talk about those two things. Then after that, we're going to begin a new series through the book of First Peter. And I'm excited about uh, getting that started with you, a new series of sermons for the fall, okay, through the book of... So we're going to go back and we're going to study one verse after the other uh, through the book of First Peter. But today we're going to talk about families uh, and how important families can be. Ruth Graham was asked if she was ever tempted to divorce her husband, Billy, because he was gone so much. You know, all these crusades all over the world, he didn't spend much time at home. And she said, divorce, never. Murder, quite a few times. <laughs> you know? It, while we were, uh, that's my wife, by the way, if you, if you didn't know that, I'm my wife over there. Uh, while we were there, we, we got to see a lot of our, our family uh, homes. Every one of us kids, all ten of us kids, were born in a different house. It wasn't a house, my father was a sharecropper, and 
And so he went where the work was, and he worked wherever he could, and, and we oftentimes moved to houses. And, and so every two or three years, we'd be in a different house, and there'd be a different kid. Uh, so we went to visit all those places and take pictures of all those places where we were born. We're getting a little older, so we never actually took any pictures of any houses. We took pictures of open fields where houses used to be. <laughs> That's where Roger was born. That's where Albert was born. <laughs> you know, uh, in these open fields where the houses are gone now. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it gets that way. Uh, which leads me to, at, at the close of our time and just going around and taking all these pictures, we went to the cemetery. Because we're not all far from it. If we wanted to see all of our relatives, we visited the cemetery as well. And, and we had some of our younger nieces and nephews with us, so they, they took pictures of all the tombstones of, of, of our relatives. But they left out some of them. And so I, I stopped them. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're taking pictures of all our relatives, and you didn't take any pictures of, of these right over here? And they said, what do you mean? I said, well, this, this family, uh, this, this family of, of uh, nuts, They've got to be relatives. <laughs> they, they, they were the all nuts. <laughs> all nuts. If they're all nutty, that must mean they're related to us. Take a picture. <laughs> well, I've heard it said that every family tree produces a few nuts. Right? And we certainly have our share in our family. But you know what? This is. If a family's going to be what God intends for it to be, there needs to be strong marriages within a family. And so I want to talk to you today about how important it is uh, that we have strong marriage relationships, spousal relationships within our families. So the first thing I want to mention to you is that God created man with family in mind. If you have your Bibles open to, and turn to uh, chapter 2, uh, of Genesis. Would you please stand in honor of God's word as we read it together? Genesis chapter 2, we're going to begin reading in verse 16. Actually, verse 15 of Genesis chapter 2. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to cultivate it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded of the man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for the day that you eat from it you shall surely die. Then the Lord said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the sky and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called a living creature, that was its name. And the man gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the sky, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. And the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. For this cause a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And a man and his wife were both naked, and they were not ashamed. Father, we thank you for the blessing of your word. And we pray, Lord, that you would open it up to our hearts and minds today, that we would learn from you the things that your spirit would teach us. Lord, you promised that your spirit would interpret the word for us. And Lord, I ask today that in spite of any words that I might say, that your spirit might say the words to our hearts that we need to hear today. And Father, we might grow in our relationship with you and with each other because we've been in your house. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. God created the man with family in mind. Uh, this uh, passage of scripture, uh, over and over again, uh, God has created and then he has said it was good. God has created and he said it was good. But there's one point in this passage where God finally says something's not good. And ultimately what he says is not good for man to be alone. God has created a great universe, a great creation. He created with family in mind, and he understands that man needs woman to be complete. Now, I, I know 
I know what we may be thinking. And we may be thinking, uh, God, at, at that point, you know, he, he created all the animals. He brought them before Adam. Mr. Elephant. There's Mrs. Elephant. There's uh, Mr. Camel. And there's Mrs. Camel. There's M- Mr. Rabbit. And there's Mrs. Rabbit. At least for a very brief time. <laughs> And I think it began to dawn on Adam, I'm missing something. I really don't think that God was missing anything. You know, you might read this passage and think, well, God didn't figure it out until later. You know, God created man and then, oh, I think I forgot something. And then he created woman. My wife says that God created man and then he said, I can do better than that. (laughs) <laughs> and he created Romer. <laughs> I, 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 couldn't, I cannot find that in the scripture. She says it's there, but I can't find it. I've looked over and over again. Uh, I don't think it was any oversight of God that he didn't create woman immediately. I think he wanted man to see that man needed woman. He knew all along that man needed woman. But he wanted man to see that he needed woman. I think sometimes we guys still don't get it. Right? But we do need each other. Uh, God created with that purpose. He recognized the need for a helper, one to, to meet the needs of man, one to, to carry on with the man. And, and Eve was created. It's, it's interesting that Eve was created as a part of man. Eve was not created out of the dirt like man was. How many of you understand that man is like man is because we were created out of the dirt? (laughs) Right? I mean, we're sloppy. We're (laughs) Well, maybe that's not theologically correct. But isn't it cool that man, that woman was created not from a piece of man's head to rule over him, not from a piece of his foot to be trodden under by him, but a piece of his side to walk beside him through life. That's really God's intention for man and woman, for a marriage, for a relationship, for the two of them uh, to be together. God created man, then God created woman from a piece of man so that we could know we're built of the same stuff. I know that women are from Venus and men are from Mars. Uh, I understand there's great differences between us, but there's also great oneness possible with us as well. I I believe the second thing I want you to see in this passage is a, a strong family has a strong marriage. Do you realize families are in trouble today? Our society is trying to tear up the family. Because if the families tore up, then the society can do whatever they want to do. It's happened before in history. It's not new entirely. Uh, It can happen again in history, but it always leads to the same result. Sodom and Gomorrah tried it, and they were destroyed because of it. 